Welcome back to Wizard's Workshop. My name is Stacy Roland, and today I don't know what I want to talk about, but I feel like it's it's necessary to talk. Um, not sure what to say. So this is my my practice. Um, see what comes out. So, I mentioned the other day about time and time being a dimension. Now, I want to bring a model to everybody's mind, to everybody's thoughts, so that we can, we can dialogue about what uh, experience is like and I think that's maybe why we're in a kerfuffling. We're not we're not speaking the same language. I'm I'm definitely not hearing uh, the languages I understand uh, when people talk about uh, higher dimensions of consciousness. And it's not that I believe that people are wrong. It's that it's not a language that is spoken that is something that I, I grasp. It, again, it's not about wrongness, it's just that I'm, I'm meticulous, I'm detail-oriented. I, I want to know how things work. And so I, I study and I look into things and over the years of study, I ran into, I don't even know if you could call it a study, it was, it was interesting reading. Uh, it started with reading stuff by Robert Anton Wilson and and the, the he, not the heading the the topic the the genre of the book that's posted on the back uh, used the word uh, he used the word gorilla ontology and it was a way of looking at reality in different ways and breaking the molds that we've built that tell us that reality is a certain way and it, it's good one of the things that he brought up stemmed from Timothy Leary and I read this again from an author named Antero Ali uh, in one of his books called Angel Tech um, but this idea is whether it was called eight circuit model um, of consciousness, the eight brains, the eight minds, you can call it lots of things. And I call it my own thing. And I believe that it's the eight dimensions of consciousness. Now, I don't suggest that there are only eight dimensions. I'm suggesting that as uh, mostly meat and water, we are able to experience eight of the I don't know how many there are and that's okay the idea is that if we can wrap our minds around a model that says it uh, gives us a finite understanding but we can we can play with it we can say I'm not telling you that this is absolute um, but it's a it's a it's a good starting point. If we move out from here and we understand more, fantastic. But we got to start somewhere. And this is something I don't hear people talking about. I hear people talking about consciousness moving into 5D. And under this model, I would suggest that we are moving into 6D, which is why I want to talk about it. Because we've been in 5D for a while as, as a Western world and we've done pretty poorly with it but consciousness is entering into 60 and a lot of people are entering into 7 and 8 there is no better or worse it's not a scale of judgment it's just uh, where we're at as people as individuals how we have allowed consciousness to be experienced uh, through this because this is what you are now 
it's it's good to discuss the lower dimensions of consciousness to understand what they are so that we can start to wrap our minds around experience and then move into the others now here's a good reason why so we're talking about consciousness and our consciousness is expressed through us by our behaviors our attitudes our ideas our uh, expansions or limitations in creativity uh, who it is that we show the world that we are this is consciousness and also how we interpret experience something is happening out there and it inputs into our senses and is processed now those senses are biological and they are in the lower dimensions but we are processing that information based on what we have built up of our selves what we believe to be true about ourselves our limitations what it is that we think we are and knowing the model helps us to maybe tweak ourselves so that we can make ourselves better so that we can put ourselves back into balance and cohesion because those lower four dimensions of consciousness relate directly to our life experience they're the, they're the foundation of what it is and how it is that we live and if there are incongruencies then not only is life more difficult but we are not able to achieve states of consciousness that allow even more of the potential information to come in because we're locked down because of circumstance but we can adjust circumstance we can change who it is we are and how we feel about our circumstance and make adjustments and change and change our, our, our worldview uh, change our minds now the first dimension the best place to start the first dimension imagine a string that goes away from you straight ahead forward that is the first dimension now it's only forward or backwards now consciousness is again the consciousness of this being and this being was an infant and in my infancy I was experiencing a world in which I could either move forward towards or away from because that was what I was capable of and there was want and and safe and I don't want an unsafe and the circumstances of my my infancy uh, how the the characters in my life behaved behaved towards each other and behaved towards me shaped my trust and my understanding in what is safe and what is unsafe and it develops very young and so it's the first thing that can get messed up and if it gets messed up in infancy because we are extremely subconscious beings in infancy we can't verbalize we don't understand we're purely absorbing everything is true and we are learning behavioral patterns based on that experience but we're not able to discern and we're not able to choose and it's very instinctual but it can be screwed up and as adults if we continue a life of choosing bad decisions then maybe that might mean that somewhere in our infancy something was wired differently now I believe that this can be adjusted through deep techniques of hypnosis 
that are way beyond my pay grade by therapists who can regress a person back into those early states and have them see them as an adult and maybe find ways to reprocess that information. But again, I am not a therapeutic hypno hypnosis, hypnotist. And so don't come to me for that. Find, find somebody else. But this state of consciousness is the foundation of everything above it. How I respond to external stressors. Am I, am I living in a world that feels unsafe? Or am I feeling like I'm safe in the world? And there are circumstances in our current reality that are it almost seems like they are consciously imposing a state of fear upon humanity through their words and their actions and what they are telling us to look at and what they're asking us to do when we are in those states of fear we are pushed back. So we're not accessing higher states of consciousness. And so that, that regulation, that understanding, that, that moving oneself into the state of safety is primary. And I was talking about the bottom four. Uh, I use the word bottom or lower. That's, that's rude. But the first four dimensions. They are survival, purely survival. It's, it's, it's the necessity of survival and how we interact with reality. Those, those first four. And as we go, you'll understand how we, when we jump into five, we are no longer in survival. But the first four are, are, and, uh, so yeah, so so the next video, I don't know how long these are going to take because I don't know if each one is going to be its own topic or uh, I can do more than one per video. But I'm going to leave this one at that because it, it's good not to isolate because again, we're going to talk about interactions as well. But, you know, baby steps, baby steps. So find how you are wired oh a technique a fun technique a neat technique um we talked about muscle testing in a previous video uh i may have mentioned this before and i'll mention it again here whether you like it or not um stand up and uh you can do this anytime now or or whenever uh, you choose but stand up and as straight as you can, as balanced as you can. And close your eyes if you want to. And think about a thing that you like. And feel what your body does. And think about a thing you don't like. And feel what your body does. Now, I'm not going to say this is 100% because some of us are just wired differently. But generally speaking, most people move towards because we are biophysiologically wired to move towards the things that we desire, to move towards the things that we want, that feels safe, and to move away from those things that don't. That's just neurobiology that's just the mechanics of the machine again very base very survival this is our foundation um, in, in comparison to the base chakra the root chakra it's our foundation to to the solid um, what is our current state of 
life? Am I in a, in a, in a place where I feel unsafe? Am I unsafe? Am I safe? Uh, this is not about what we have. Because people who live behind gated walls might feel lucky. And they may have a, a large number of accumulations. But they don't feel safe. And so their energy is low. And so not everybody that has is connected. And not everybody that doesn't have isn't connected. Lots of people that, that don't have accumulations are free from the tethers, the, the, the circumstances that, that make us feel unsafe or, or bound down. And so this is not a, a judgment on, on uh, the human condition. This is purely uh, a condition on how we experience reality as individuals. And it's binary. It's, it's, that's it. It is a, a single dimensional uh, experience with reality. And when it judges, when it chooses, everything above it comes along. Whether we are mentally willing or not. And a lot of things can get skewed because of that one. Because we don't listen. And maybe we might keep trying and keep doing and keep doing. Um, keep staying in situations uh, that aren't good for us. Because we rationalize it or uh, we are feared into those choices. Um, we talked about fear being the mind killer. Uh, it, it affects the brain in such a way that we become base beings in the, the, the brain stem. We're not even able. We're not able to use the higher uh, brain. And we're talking about consciousness here. And this is the machine of consciousness. And so we have to get into these states where we feel safe in our experience. Nobody can do it for us. That's, that's the other part about it being so foundational. You might feel safe in other people um, or with other people. But you need to feel safe in you so that you don't rely on other people. And that way you are able to add to an experience. For the others, because again, we're in this for each other. We're, and that's why I'm doing this, because I get bored and I gotta talk and I got stuff to say, and so I'm gonna put it out there and, and see what happens, because I got nothing better to do, and I think it's important enough to to do it and say hey, and um, if you'd like it, you know, subscribe to the channel. I I'm gonna keep doing this this is fun um, there's so much cool stuff to talk about but this this eight dimensions of consciousness um, is, a, is a whole group of videos and it goes together and I think it's important because when we start talking about the higher states of consciousness we're going to know what we have access to and that's that's cool stuff so so yeah, pay attention, listen, and uh, we'll talk about it. If you have questions, you know, post those questions. Um, read the books that I, I mentioned. You got Timothy Leary, um, Eight Circuits of the Brain, uh, Cosmic Trigger, maybe. Um, Robert Anton Wilson. Uh, maybe it was Prometheus Rising. 
I don't know. You'll have to look that up. And then uh, and Tara Wally, uh Angel Tech. Phenomenal book. Great practices. Someday I might show you my tarot deck that I developed from the exercise in that book, Angel Tech. And I know he wrote something else on uh, the brain and eight dimensions of consciousness. Um, I'm not fully wrapping my mind around what he's saying. Um, but his ideas seeded my ideas. So I'm looking for the comparisons. But nobody else is talking about consciousness and how we measure, uh, for lack of a better word, but understand uh, the dimensionality of it. Because that to me is just cool. And, you know, so I'm going to talk about it. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.